For this study, we performed a cost-effectiveness analysis using data collected alongside the TIME2 randomized clinical trial, which compared the effectiveness of indwelling pleural catheters, otherwise referred to as IPC, to talc slurry pleurodesis in the management of patients with malignant pleural effusions. We conducted this cost-effectiveness analysis from the perspective of the healthcare payer, using direct healthcare-related costs and quality-of-life data using EQ5D questionnaires. These were collected alongside the clinical trial. Incorporating survival data, quality-adjusted life years, or qualies, were calculated for each group. So what did we find? Mean utility scores were similar at baseline and during follow-up. At one year, the mean quality difference between IPC and TELC was 0.026 qualies, which was not clinically nor statistically significant. So mean total costs for managing patients also did not significantly differ between groups. Overall, the estimated incremental cost-effectiveness ratio for IPC as compared with TELC during the 52 weeks following initiation of treatment was $10,870 per quality-adjusted life year gained. It is common practice in economic analysis to report final results in terms of an incremental cost-effectiveness ratio. This is best illustrated by looking at a cost-effectiveness plane. Interventions which are found to be incrementally more costly but less effective than their comparator fall in the northwest quadrant of the plane and would not be adopted. Interventions which are incrementally more effective than their comparator and less costly fall in the southeast quadrant of the plane and are considered dominant strategies. Technologies which are more costly and incrementally more effective, or less costly and less effective, fall in the other quadrants. Whether these technologies are adopted depends on what a decision maker is willing to pay to accept these strategies. This willingness to pay for health gains is referred to as the cost effectiveness threshold. At a threshold of 30,000 pounds per quality, the probability that IPC is cost effective compared to TELC is approximately 65%. Our results did vary in a few of the sensitivity analyses we performed. In patients with limited survival, that is less than 14 weeks, the probability that IPC is cost-effective exceeds 95%. When patients in the IPC group were assumed to require two hours of nursing care per week, the probability that IPC is cost-effective compared to TELC falls to approximately 35%. In conclusion, the cost-effectiveness of IPC is favorable when compared to TELC pleurodesis, although substantial uncertainty exists around this estimate. We recommend that either IPC or TELC pleurodesis be considered as a first-line option in the treatment of malignant pleural effusion in patients without history of prior pleurodesis, and that choice of management strategy incorporate patient's prognosis and personal preferences.